the book of Enoch, one of the patriarchs, actually he was the uh, ancestor of Methuselah. It was banned from the Bible, even though it was read uh, in the uh, Orthodox Church of uh, Ethiopia. It tells of the true story of humanity. In its entirety, the book of Enoch is made up of five books, the book of the Watchers, the book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions, and the Epistles of Enoch, containing some 100 characters. These chapters tell the story of the seventh patriarch in the book of Genesis, Enoch. He was the father of Methuselah and grandfather of Noah, the same Noah in the biblical story of the deluge, the great flood of Noah's Ark. Yet, this was not the biblical story of Noah's Ark. In fact, the book of Enoch provides an entirely different recounting of the events leading up to the great flood of Noah's time that is a completely different doctrinal history. It tells a story of the Watchers, explained in biblical terms to be the fallen angels sent to earth to watch over humans at some undefined and ancient point in time. Unfortunately, far from merely watching the humans, these watchers, these fallen angels, became infatuated by human women and in short order began to engage in depraved sexual acts with them. The Book of Enoch tells of the children born through this interbreeding between watchers and humans called the Nephilim. These Nephilim we were, as described, giants and savages that endangered and pillaged humanity, or said another way, supernatural man-eating giants. We even have, in my, I want to put my comment in here, in Greek mythology of ancient Greece, these human giants were man-eating giants. If you even read the book of the Odyssey of uh, uh, Ulysses, the king of Ithaca, who with his men uh, had to escape this giant, the uh, Cyclops, the, with the one eye in the, in the center of his forehead, who was uh, a man-eating giant. So we have recounting of these man-eating giants from ancient Greek mythology. Was it mythology or was it in part truth? Now, um, anchored with what the Watchers had done, those described as gods chained them in a super subterranean prison deep within the earth, Enoch became the go-between gods and imprisoned watchers. This is on Humans Are Free and its Creative Commons, but in the book of Enoch, it also describes that Enoch became the archangel Metatron. Now, who was Metatron? The Hebrew word Metatron is an angel in Judaic, Islamic, and Christian mystical mythology mentioned a few brief passages in the Agada and in the mystical Kabbalistic texts within the rabbinic literature, and I'm reading from Wikipedia. The figure forms one of the traces for the presence of dualistic proclivities in the otherwise monotheistic visions of both the Tanakh and the later Christian doctrine. The name Metatron is not mentioned in the Torah, and how the name originated is a matter of debate. In Islamic tradition, he's also known as Mitatrun, the angel of the veil. In folklorist tradition, he is the highest of the angels and serves as a celestial scribe or the recording angel. In Jewish Apocrypha and early Kabbalah, Metatron is a name that Enoch received after his transformation into an angel. As we know, he did not die. He was taken up into heaven. And from there, he was transformed into an angel. The origins from Hellenistic time mention of a second divine figure, either beside Yahweh, God, or beneath him, occur in a number of Jewish texts, mostly apocryphal. These Jewish traditions implying a divine dualism were most frequently associated with Enoch. In the rabbinic period, they center on Metatron, often in the context of debates over the heretical doctrine of two powers in heaven. Ultimately, these ideas appear to go back to differing interpretations of the heavenly and thrown in passages at Exodus 24.10 and Daniel 7.9 and perhaps even Ezekiel 1.26, interpretations that came to distinguish what was orthodox from what was heretical in Judaism. Among the Tsuda epigrapha, 
1 Enoch, the book of parables, presents two figures, the Son of Man and Enoch. At first, these two characters seem to be separate entities. Enoch views the Son of Man enthroned in heaven. Later, however, they prove to be one and the same. Many scholars believe that the final chapter of the book of parables are a later edition. Others think they are not, and that the Son of Man is Enoch's heavenly double, similarly to the prayer of Joseph, where Jacob is depicted as an angel. The book of Daniel displays two similar characters, the Ancient of Days and the One Like a Man. Parts of the text in Daniel are Aramaic and may have been changed in translation. The Septuagint reads that the Son of Man came as the Ancient of Days. All other translations say the Son of Man gained access to the Ancient of Days and was brought before that one. The identification of Metatron with the Gnostic Three Enoch where the name first appears is not explicitly made in the Talmud, although it does refer to the prince of the world who was young but now is old. However, some of the earliest Kabbalists assumed the connection. There also seems to be two Metatrons, one spelled with six letters in the Aramean Hebrew and one spelled with seven letters in Hebrew. The former may be the transformed Enoch, prince of the countenance within the divine palace, the latter, the primordial Metatron, an emanation of the cause of causes, specifically the tenth and last emanation, identified with the earthly divine presence. Furthermore, the Merkaba text Ru Re Yuhot Yehazik identifies the Ancient of Days from the book of Daniel as Metatron. Now the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud mentions Metatron by name in three places. Hagiga 15a, Sanhedrin 38b, and Avodah Zarah 3b. The Hagiga 15a describes Elisha ben Abuya in paradise seeing Metatron sitting down, an action that is not done in the presence of God. Elisha ben Abuya therefore looks to Metatron as a deity and says heretically, there are indeed two powers in heaven. The rabbis explain that Metatron had permission to sit because of his function as a heavenly scribe writing down the deeds of Israel. The Talmud states it was proven to Elisha that Metatron could not be a second deity, but the fact that Metatron received 60 strokes with fiery rods to demonstrate that Metatron was not a god but an angel and could be punished. In Sanhedrin 38b of the Minim tells Rabbi Edith that Metatron should be worshipped because he has a name like his master, Rabbi Edith uses the same passage, Exodus 23, 21, to show that Metatron was an angel and not a deity and thus should not be worshipped. Furthermore, as an angel, Metatron has no power to pardon transgressions, nor was he to be received even as a messenger of forgiveness. In Avodah Zarah 3b, the Talmud hypothesizes as to how God spends his day. It suggested that in the fourth quarter of the day, God sits and instructs the school children while in the preceding three quarters, Metatron may take God's place or God may do this among other tasks. The Yevamot 16b records an utterance, quote, I have been young, also I have been old, and quote, found in Psalm 37.25. The Talmud here attributes this utterance to the chief angel and prince of the world, whom the rabbinic tradition identifies as Metatron. Now, in the apocryphal texts, in the Apocalypse of Zerubbabel, Metatron is not identified as Enoch. Instead, he's identified as the Archangel Michael. The text also records that Metatron in Gematria is equivalent to Shaddai. While he also appears in other apocryphal writings, he's most prominent in the Apocrypha of Zerubbabel. In these writings, he plays the role of heavenly interlocutor locutor delivering knowledge about the coming messianic age. Please leave your comments and um, thank you for your support. If you wish, you can also support me on my Patreon account. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight 
on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.